the Skylark. Initiative and achievement. And what more appropriate than that our story of Exhibit B-801 should open in the transport pavilion close by. Exhibit B-801. Basically a standard four-cylinder MG engine. Supercharged and mounted on a chassis frame again based on current MG design. A car whose versatility has won it a unique place in motoring history. The all-British MG Special, driven by Lieutenant Colonel A.T. Goldie Gardner, M.C. Exhibited by special request of the festival authorities, the car could only be spared for this purpose for 43 days. Thus, in the early hours of Friday, June the 15th, it was quietly taken from among the assembled engineering masterpieces to keep an appointment 5,000 miles and nine weeks away. So, from the center of so much that was quality, quality in the shape of a lightweight sports car moved on its way. Its objective, to set up new international Class F records. Its destination, Bonneville Salt Flats, west of Salt Lake City in Utah, USA. Before leaving for America, a small party was held at Abingdon, where we find Goldie Gardner showing the secrets of the car to members of the press. What attracts them is the fact that the engine is basically the same pushrod operated OHV as used in the TD midget, plus the supercharger and the twin SU carburetors, fed by an air intake led through the radiator mounted well ahead of the wheels. The detachable wheel is an idea the anti-theft people might copy. It's designed to enable Goldie to climb into his seat. The cutaway shape allows him an effective diameter of 10 inches with no risk of fouling the top panel or himself. As he replaces the wheel, note the clean layout of the dashboard. The lap speed clock in particular is of great importance. It shows the exact time taken by him on each lap. final tuning of the engine was done in the test shops at the MG factory at Abingdon, under the direct supervision of Goldie Gardner. When running full out, the engine needs up to 200 cubic feet of air per minute, and with the exhaust manifold removed, the noise can be wearing on the ears. surprising perhaps that the peace and quiet of the open are chosen for final checking culmination of months of preparatory work and still less surprising that working together as always we find the company's chief planning engineer Sid Enover and Reg Jackson chief inspector that unbeatable combination which has been behind 21 years of MG development <laughs> The driving position was literally built around Goldie Gardner's six feet plus and was designed from carefully tailored measurements. In order to keep the frontal area of the car down to 11 square feet, it was found necessary to compress him into a vertical height of only 22 inches. To do this, a hammock type seat was used and canted to an angle of 45 degrees, the whole power unit and drive shaft being offset six degrees across the chassis. The body weighs well under 200 weight and can be secured into position by two men in less than 10 minutes. Designed in 1938, it emerged unscathed after six years of war and one very serious fire, but with a detachable domed perspex screen in place of the original open hood. As the wheel goes on, give a thought to the brakes, which operate on the rear wheels only, and thus cut down the total of unsprung weight at the front. Note, by the way, that though the bottom of the body is flat, it has two inches less ground clearance at the front. This inclination combines with the swift fall off of the nose to check all tendency of the car to lift. Anything but speed records, of course. The 
technique of crating the magic midget can appear deceptively simple when it's tackled by Nuffield Exports Limited, who pack hundreds of cars every day. First job, once they've steadied her on the base of the crate, is to get the wheel covers off. While they get the various chocks into position and get busy with the supports, let us consider for a moment the basic design from which the MG Special has sprung. Its roots stretch back to the M-type midget, which won the team prize in 1930 in the double 12-hour race at Brooklands. Its prestige is based on ancestry, which, with a 750cc engine, was first to achieve 100 miles per hour in 1931. First two in Class G to exceed 200, eight years later at Dessau. Three hours they take to bed her down, this holder prior to Utah of 64 records. With her pedigree engine matched and rematched to the needs of the class, she's set up 95% of all 22 international records held by her driver. Finally, the spare parts, and there are wise insurance for a speed attempt so far from home. Among them are superchargers, record equipment, 12 wheels and tires, and engines for the long distance and flying sprint attempts. And so, Southampton, and the end of the first lap in this quest for the magic miles per minute. And beyond the dockside warehouses, a holder of sea records to help forward this latest land record attempt by Britain.